both desire to live the life that we deserve, the life that we all aspire to achieving, the one with joy and happiness and memories and all that good stuff that you want to look back and say, I created for myself. Now, I love your comments. You know I love your comments. Every time you comment, I get excited. I hear that you're getting it. I see that you're getting it. You show me how it's showing up, so please keep them coming. Miss T, you commented on the episode, How to Reduce Chaos in Your Life. And you said, I love your quote, you said, quote unquote, B-O-L, Breakthrough Out Loud. If you're just joining us, B-O-L means Breakthrough Out Loud. And in this community, in this tribe, when we have a breakthrough, we share it. So thank you so much, Miss T, for sharing your breakthrough. You said, quote unquote, the space between chaos and intention is personal development. Ooh, say that again. The space between chaos and intention is personal development. You said, awesome discovery, quote. So that's what this journey called life is really all about, explanation point. Thank you, Lisa. You are welcome, sis. My pleasure. And then Danita, you commented on the episode, Master One Lesson Before Taking on the Next. And you said, quote, I just realized I have a whole lot of aha moments, but I'm failing when it comes to putting them into action. Yes, I can dance on that. 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 When you get an aha moment and you don't put it into action, you got to get the aha moment again. You said, quote, instead of being an information gatherer, I'm going to focus on a few things to master. Hashtag B-O-L, hashtag action. Ooh, y'all make me so excited. It's getting hot in here. Don't take off none of your clothes. You know I love your comments, so keep them coming. You know, when you're in a place where you're hurting and you acknowledge it, number one is acknowledge it. Don't try to run past the pain as if it doesn't exist. I understand rising above it. I understand producing when you have it because you still have to go on. Life goes on. You still have work. You still have family. You still have school. You still have life. But don't try to run past the pain and act as if it doesn't exist. You know, for so many years, I would act as if the pain didn't exist. Well, here's what I realized. Faking like it's not there doesn't make it go away. It just doesn't give it a space to, to live and then move on. I always say, if you're in pain, be in pain. Just don't take out real estate in pain. Don't take out a lease option buy in pain. Don't rent to own anything in pain. Don't reside in pain. Go, I'm in pain. Now, what do I need? The truth is powerful. I once heard someone say, I think I heard in the book, the truth will set you free, even if it's about pain. It doesn't mean you want the pain to grow. Now remember, energy does grow where energy goes. So if you're putting energy toward being in pain, then the pain is gonna grow. That's in having conversation after conversation after conversation about what got you in pain. I say if you're gonna talk about the pain, talk, have a conversation after conversation after conversation about what you're doing to get out of the pain that you're in. So number one, acknowledge the pain. Number two, immediately find the action steps that you can live in on a daily, I didn't say weekly, I didn't say monthly, on a daily basis to help you move through the pain. Number three, don't expect to run out of the pain. Sometimes you'll walk out slowly, sometimes you'll crawl out, sometimes you'll scoot out. As long as you stay in consistent movement, I'll write that down, stay in consistent movement. And what that looks like is a daily habit. So for me, the place that I had to begin was with Lisa. I recommend you begin with you. So I recommend that you get in the mirror and do a mirror exercise. Because when you're in pain, it's not about who got you there, nor is it about who all can get you out. First, it's about you recognizing where you are, and then two, you being your own rescue. So the mirror exercise is always powerful. So I invite you to get in the mirror. And when you get in the mirror, I want you to do this exercise. I did this exercise every single day for six months straight. Now, you might not need to do it for six months, but I was suffering with post-traumatic stress disorder. I was diagnosed as clinically depressed. I was prescribed Prozac. I had to give myself something to help me develop my own belief in Lisa muscles, my own faith in myself muscle, my own I can get back up muscle. I needed something that can help me crawl to a walk and walk to a run and then run back to my soul. And so I did it every day for six months. I invite you to do it for at least 28 days if you find yourself navigating yourself back to joy or you want to navigate yourself to your next level of joy. You don't have to be just in crisis to get benefit from this exercise. So get in the mirror. Look at yourself just like I'm looking at you. Look at yourself. 
and I want you to see yourself as if you were your best friend and you're encouraging your best friend. Because if you look at yourself as if you were your best friend, then you're not gonna judge the lines in your face or the hair or the whatever it is we tend to judge ourselves for when we're looking in the mirror at ourselves. Just see love, just see possibility, just see all the things that you've come through. And then I want you to speak to yourself as if you were your best friend. Say your first name, I would say Lisa. Say your first name and then complete these three sentences. The first sentence, say your name first. Lisa, I would say, Lisa, I'm proud that you. And find seven different things to celebrate yourself for. And they could be small things. Lisa, I'm proud that you got out of bed this morning. I'm proud that you, I'm proud that you prayed today. I'm proud that you went to work today. I'm proud that you set a healthy boundary in that relationship. I'm proud that you got out of the relationship. I'm proud that you said yes, even though you're afraid to leap about that new job. I'm proud that you got on the phone today with your mother. Whatever that small thing is that you can celebrate, they don't have to be big, huge things. Remember, celebrate the micro wins and the micro wins become macro wins. Seven different things that you can be proud of. Now, here's what I did because I'm a little bit over 30, haha. I first went back and celebrated everything from 20 years ago or older because I hadn't celebrated those things. The very first thing I celebrated myself for, I had done in second grade. The second thing I celebrated myself for was something I did in middle school. The third thing I celebrated myself for was, was how when my father left town when I was in high school and he would say no company after 10 o'clock, I never had company after 10 o'clock, but no one ever knew that because I was at home alone. I celebrated myself for that. There's so many things that you're under celebrated for because you're waiting for someone else to celebrate you when you are the person to throw yourself a party. You are the person to celebrate you. Don't wait for someone else's acknowledgement. Give yourself acknowledgement. Acknowledge you and the rest of the world will follow suit and they will begin to acknowledge you more. So the first sentence, seven different things that you're proud of that you've done. Big, small, recent, and way back. Second sentence. Now this acknowledgement, this might hurt. This might take you down a peg. This might make you want to quit. This is where your convenience and your conviction won't live on the same block. This might feel like a, uh, a gut punch. But this is also the one that's the most healing of all. It's the one that cuts the shackles to blame, shame, guilt, regret, and anger. It's still difficult for me when I do it, but I still do it because I deserve to be free in my mind. Sometimes we're free physically, but our mind has shackles on it because we're holding ourselves hostage to something we did before, something we didn't do before, something we said or something we didn't say. The second sentence, you look in your eyes, you say your name, and you say, I forgive you for it. Go back 20 years, go back 10 years, go back five years, or go back five days. Lisa, I forgive you for getting in a relationship that wasn't worthy of you. Lisa, I forgive you for lowering your integrity bar and saying yes when you really should have said no. Lisa, I forgive you for endangering Jelani when you got into an abusive relationship unknowingly. Lisa, I forgive you for not getting out sooner, quicker, faster. Lisa, I forgive you for gaining over 80 pounds, being too stubborn to go to the doctor to find out what was really wrong with you. Lisa, I forgive you for blaming yourself when a relationship didn't go right and he left when in fact man's rejection was really God's protection but you blamed you that second sentence is liberating sobering a little painful and definitely free it won't happen magically the first time you say it which is why I did the exercise every single day for six months straight and somehow one day you wake up and you go to forgive yourself for something and, and it's not there anymore. There's no blame, there's no shame, there's no guilt, there's no regret, there's no anger. And you're like, how did it go away? Because you gave it attention every day, because you minimized it into the nothingness that it always was. You reduced the power of the story. So the second sentence is the sentence that I need you to commit to do every day. And I did it with tears falling, with chest tight. I did it in audible. It sounded like, Lisa, I forgive you for, I mean, it was bad. I mean, it was bad. And the third and final sentence that I invite you is also something we don't do enough. We do it for everyone else, but we don't do it for ourselves. I want you to look at yourself and complete the sentence. Say your name first, Lisa. I commit to you that. Say, I commit.
commit to you and make seven different commitments to you. See, you'll commit to someone else and you'll honor the commitment. I'll meet you by four. I'll show up for that meeting. Every time you decide to show up for work on time, every time you deliver something for your child or your friend, you show up for them. But how often and consistently have you shown up for you? Oh, that was a big one for me. I cried even on this one. I cried on all three sentences. But what will you commit to do? It looks as simple as this. Lisa, I commit to you that today I will only say yes when I want to say yes. And I'll say no on the days that I need to say no. Lisa, I commit to you that I won't keep score. I won't collect evidence on why life won't work for you. Our relationships won't work for you. Or this next eating plan won't work for you. I won't keep track. I mean, I won't keep score. I won't collect evidence why it won't work. I'll keep track on why it should work. Lisa, I commit to you that today I'll stop the negative chatter sooner, quicker, faster. And I'll go into the love chatter sooner, quicker, faster. So three sentences every single day. And it will halt the pain and foster in the possibility every single time. There's no magic. There's no sprinkle fairy dust. There's no potion lotion. There's no magic wand with this. You got to do the work. You got to be willing to walk the journey. Three sentences. I'm proud that you, I forgive you for, and I commit to you that every single day. Now, if you're bonus and you're going to give me three months, just, just three months is my advanced student. Give me three months solid that I want you to identify that you're going to do it for three months. And if you want to do the general commitment, 28 days. And when you do that, you'll find that the pain will slowly begin to dissipate. It'll slowly begin to evaporate into the nothingness that it was, the story that it was, the perception that we gave it. And all of a sudden, the truth will rise above it. And you'll begin to see it again for who you really are. Not for what that situation made you believe about yourself, but who you've always been designed to be. It's like wiping the steam off the mirror. And all of a sudden, you see you again. tools that we both desire to live the life that we deserve, the life that we all aspire to achieving, the one with joy and happiness and memories and all that good stuff that you want to look back and say, I created for myself. Now, I love your comments. You know I love your comments. 
every time you comment, I get excited. I hear that you're getting it. I see that you're getting it. You show me how it's showing up, so please keep them coming. Miss T, you commented on the episode, How to Reduce Chaos in Your Life. And you said, I love your quote, you said, quote unquote, B-O-L, Breakthrough Out Loud. If you're just joining us, B-O-L means breakthrough out loud. And in this community, in this tribe, when we have a breakthrough, we share it. So thank you so much, Miss T, for sharing your breakthrough. You said, quote unquote, the space between chaos and intention is personal development. Ooh, say that again. The space between chaos and intention is personal development. You said, awesome discovery, quote. So that's what this journey called life is really all about, explanation point. Thank you, Lisa. You are welcome, sis. My pleasure. And then, Danita, you commented on the episode, Master One Lesson, before taking on the next. And you said, quote, I just realized I have a whole...